Welcome to SciTech's SpectroFlow software video tutorial series. This video will discuss how to create an experiment when acquiring samples in tubes. Select the acquisition module. Then click New from the experiment menu to open the Create New Experiment window. There are several tabs in this window, fluorescent tags, groups, markers, acquisition, and keywords. The tabs may vary depending on the software version and preferences, but are the same in SpectroFlow software, SpectroFlow CS software, and the Experiment Builder in SciTech Cloud. Note that the experiment can be edited at any time, so it is possible to skip a tab and edit it later, even after samples have been recorded. Start by naming the experiment. Then select the fluorescent tags included in the panel. The left side of this window shows all the fluorescent tags available in the library, organized by primary excitation laser. We're using the SciTech CFluor TBMNK pre-optimized kit, which includes eight fluorochromes plus a viability dye. To find the first fluorophore, use the search box. Double-click the floor to move it to the right window and add it to the experiment. To add multiple fluorophores at one time, use the control key to select them and click Add. A tip for finding fluorophores quickly is to type the most unique part of the name. For example, type 720 instead of Cfluor R720. If an extra tag is added by accident, double-click or select Remove to remove it. If a fluorescent tag is not listed, it can be easily added to the library. Please refer to our video, Adding Fluorescent Tags, for instructions. Check the counter at the top to ensure the correct number of tags have been added. Then, click Next. In the Groups tab, select Manual Tube as the correct carrier type. Click this button to add the reference control group. In the Create Reference Group window, use the top section to define unstained and negative control tubes and the bottom section to add single stained controls. The unstained control tube defines the autofluorescence of the multicolor samples, so it must match the multicolor sample type, experimental conditions, and preparation protocol. The software automatically adds one cell control for each fluorophore in the experiment. When using beads for controls, select beads for the first control to change all controls. When using a mixture of cells and beads, change each control individually. Use the label column to type the name of the marker or any other identifying information. If an internal negative will be used, leave the universal negative column blank. Alternatively, to use a universal negative, select the appropriate negative from the drop-down menu. If the default unstained control does not match the sample type and staining protocol of the indicated reference control, use the Define Universal Negative Control checkbox to add an appropriately matched universal negative, then select that option from the drop-down menu. When optimizing an assay, it's beneficial to run both bead and cell controls for the same reagent. Click the Add button to add more controls. Control names are a combination of the fluorescent tag, control type, and label. Make sure each name is unique. Click Save to add the tubes to the experiment. To add multicolor samples or additional experimental controls, such as FMOs, click Add Group. Additional tubes can be added by entering a number and then clicking Add Tube. To rename any groups or tubes, double-click the text. Click Next to move to the Markers tab to add marker labels for the samples. 
The labels for the reference group are pre-filled since they were entered in the previous tab. Marker labels for the samples can be added at the experiment, group, or tube level. In this example, the labels are the same for all tubes in the experiment, so double-click the first box at the experiment level, type the marker, and press the Tab key on the keyboard to move to the next box. Alternatively, labels can be copied from the reference controls and pasted using keyboard shortcuts. Click Next to move to the Acquisition tab. Select the appropriate experiment user setting. We recommend starting with SciTech assay setting for basic immunophenotyping assays and adjusting forward scatter, side scatter, and threshold settings for each sample type. The stopping criteria for recording data is determined by events to record, stopping volume, and stopping time. The software will automatically end the recording when the first of these three conditions is met. These selections can be changed later as needed. Events to record defines the number of events within the selected stopping gate. We recommend switching from all events to P1, which is a forward and side scatter gate in the default RAW worksheet. 5,000 events within the P1 gate is an appropriate number for beads controls, but cells controls often need more events depending on the marker. These criteria can be modified after the data has been previewed and additional gates have been added. To prioritize the volume or stopping time criteria, increase the events to record to a very high value and lower the preferred stopping value. When defining stopping volume, be sure to account for at least 35 microliters of consumption when the sample is boosted to the flow cell. For example, if the total sample volume is 200 microliters, it would be best to enter a value of 150 microliters. If the application requires both a minimum number of events and a minimum volume, check the count and volume option. The storage gate determines the data saved in the final FCS file. We recommend keeping the default All Events option. If a gate is selected, only the events within that gate will be saved and all other events will be deleted. Click Next. Keywords are metadata saved in the FCS file, which can be recognized and used by other applications. The Keywords tab is completely optional and can be hidden in the Preferences module. The Keywords topic is covered in a separate video. Click Save and Open to begin running samples. To save a template, select the Save As button. To make modifications to the experiment, select the Edit button and return to the appropriate tab. This completes the experiment setup. We are now ready to record samples.